Hey friends, welcome to The Hangar. My name is Sam, and today we're gonna to be building something really special. This is our third airframe. It's called the Wasp. The HRC Wasp is an entry-level jet-style aircraft, modeled after an F-A-18 Hornet. If you're looking to make a step up from a basic trainer, this is the airframe for you. It can be as tame and easy to fly as you want. However, add bigger batteries and you can throw the hammer down. The Wasp looks so cool in the air that you'll want to request permission for a flyby. Wasp was designed by our very own disaster of crash, Rick Harlan, coming to you straight out of the West Texas design facility. Cowboys down there, they love to fly low, they love to fly fast. If you haven't looked them up, go to our Facebook page. You'll see two groups. You'll see the squadron and you'll see the West Texas design facility. The boys down there, they just got to have a good time, all the while designing some awesome airframes. We love them down there and this is their one of their first entries into our, into our lineup. They're, they've got lots of airframes coming, so don't forget to stay tuned. By the way, the Wasp comes in two different design styles with a variety of options. The first option is our war-torn weathered look, and the second one being our Blue Angels design. Now, the cool thing about our Blue Angels design is you can actually go in and you can choose what number you want for the Blue Angels design. You can choose one through eight, and that's kind of a custom thing you can do. So you and your buddies can both order one and you can fly different numbers and fly in formation. And, you can have a whole squadron. You can have the whole team of the Blue Angels. So head on over to our website, thehangarc.com, and pick yourself up a quick kit. You can also order just a skin kit. So you can still build from the plans, and you can still build from Adam's Ready Board, but you can skin your airplane and make your airplane look amazing and make all your friends at the flight field jealous. Let's get our supplies in order, and let's, uh, let's talk about what you need to build this kit. If you're building from our plans, you should already have downloaded the plans cut them out, trace them on the foam, and cut the foam out before you begin this process. If you're building for one of our quick kits, like we are, everything will be included right in here. Things you'll need to build your quick kit is a hot glue gun. I like my, uh, this is my AdTech Pro 80. It's a great little glue gun, provides plenty of hot glue, and times like when you're doing the big surfaces like the wings, you need some glue sticks, you'll obviously need a razor knife. Uh, I like X-Acto, but a utility knife blade, However you want to use it. I like my, uh, my Frisca's X-Acto knife. Um, I like to use for skinning, I like to use a speedball roller. Okay, we'll put links to these in the description below. Um, you'll need some packing tape. I like this Duck brand Easy Start tape. It's green. I think we picked this up at Walmart. Um, you're also going to need servos, four of them in total. We like our Metal Gear servos. They're much stronger and they are they outlast the nylon servos, although if you have nylon servos, those will work as well. You're going to need a battery extension. I made this myself with some extra 14 gauge wire I had laying around. You're going to need a couple of servo extension wires. And you're going to need motors. A motor. There's a few different motors that you can run on the HRC Wasp. The first one is a 3542-1250 kV motor. That's what we're running on this Blue Angels Wasp behind me. Uh, the second motor that, we're running, that we've run on this Wasp that's done really well is a 3548-1100 kV motor. And the third one that we've run on this Wasp, 3542-1250 kV. Um, another one that we've run on this Wasp is a 3542-1250 kV motor. So lots of motor choices for this Wasp. We've actually tried our 2212-1400 kV motor, but a little bit underpowered, so we stepped up to these bigger motors and we had all the power in the world. You're also going to want a spray bottle with some water. This is for delamination of your foam. Um, when we get to that point, you're going to want some spray glue 
any brand will work. I have a lot of people ask me and a lot of people say, you know, Super 77 is better. Super 77 is a great brand, don't get me wrong. That's what I had to use all throughout school. But really, spray glue, as long as it holds, is fine. Um, I've used Super 77. I've used the Gorilla Glue, which is not my favorite, by the way. It usually clumps up. Um, I've used this Loctite stuff, a wide variety of spray glue I've used. If your skin does come unlaminated or delaminated, and we'll talk a little about this further, you can just stick a little hot glue underneath it, press it back down, and you'll be perfectly fine. The other question we've been getting a lot lately is, what do you do to waterproof your foam board? Can I build with waterproof foam board, or you know, what are you what are you guys doing? Well, since we peel the skin off, and since we or we peel the uh, since we peel the paper off, and we have a really nice skin to go on the outside, one thing we like to use to protect our foam board is this polyacrylic. It's a spray. It's water based. It doesn't yellow like the stuff in the can that you paint on. Just be aware, we've done numerous tests. The stuff in the can will yellow the paper, and it yellows regular foam board paper too. Um, we like the clear gloss because it gives it a nice glossy finish. Just remember when you're applying this afterwards, make sure you do light, light coats, and you do between five and seven coats. Very light. It will waterproof it, and it will make your foam board airplane last that just that much longer. Okay, I think that's it. Um, Oh, tools, as far as tools you'll need. You'll need your glue gun, you'll need some extra glue. I like my speedball roller um, for applying the skins. A nice sharp X-Acto knife. I like my Friska's uh, knife, it's very comfortable to hold. Um, some Duck brand Easy Start tape. This is the crystal clear stuff. Holds up really well, it looks really well, really good on your airframe. Uh, a couple other tools you'll need. You'll need a pair of wire cutters or dikes. And you'll need, this is our, this is a tool, I don't know how I ever did without this tool. This is a Z-Bend tool. Um, I always thought I'll be fine without one, and finally I ordered one, and I would never go back to not having a Z-Bend tool. It makes life so much easier. You don't have to have it, it's just a nice luxury. And they're only 15 to 20 bucks. Other than that, I think we're ready. Um, I don't think we have anything else we can cover. I think we're ready. All right, let's open up the quick kit. Let's see what's inside. We'll show you all the pieces that come with your quick kit, including the skins. And in this build video, we're gonna step you through the entire process from skinning to building to applying to installing the electronics. So um, let's open up this quick kit and let's show you what's inside. All right, let's get to this build. Let's open up this quick kit. All right, let's get to the build. Let's open up this quick kit and show you what's inside. So you notice this, this is the way they come, they're gonna come. Depending on the skin you'll have, you'll see a representation here. Here we have our info sheet. If you scan this QR code right here, then you'll be taken straight to our build video. So for those of you who are building um, from our quick kits, go ahead and scan that QR code. It is also on the free build plans, so it'll always take you there. Let's go over our pre-flight checklist. We're gonna be flying this airframe on an APC 10-7 electric prop, uh, 3542 1250 KV brushless motor, or the other motors we talked about earlier a 50 amp brushless ESC, two 2200 milliamp 3S40C LiPo packs wired in parallel, four nine gram servos, some spray glue and polyacrylic. All right, let's open this thing up. I love opening up a brand new quick kit. First thing you'll notice is an info sheet. It has not only your pre-flight checklist, but it has a QR code. That'll take you directly to our YouTube channel and links to it links directly to this build video. Second thing you'll notice is our 3D printed badge. These are great for putting on your truck, your uh, flight box, your toolbox, uh, put around your shop, those types of things. Uh, third thing is the first sheet of skin. Sheet number one of our uh, laser cut foam. In this little cubby here, you'll have our control horns and our firewall or motor mount, if you will. Uh, sheet number one of foam, skin number two, foam piece or foam sheet number two, skin number three and four. they look like 
sheet number three of foam, skin number five, sheet number four, skin number six, sheet number five, skin number seven and eight, sheet number six, skin number nine and ten, and sheet of foam number seven. And you'll notice in these little cubby holes, there are some barbecue skewers. We'll be using those a little bit later. And finally, sheet number eight of foam, the very last sheet. And you'll notice in these little cubby holes, there is some uh, push rods. We'll be using those a little bit later, so don't let those fall out and don't lose them. Let's go back to sheet one of your skins and sheet one of your foam. And let's get this build underway. I'm going to take the rest of these pieces. I'm just going to set them aside. And let's get going. Let's get this party started. Let's get this show on the road. Now, with these skins, you can separate them either with scissors or an X-Acto knife. I recommend the X-Acto knife. Uh, make sure you have a nice, crisp, brand new, sharp blade. When I was in design school, our teachers made us change our blade every three to five cuts. That's a little bit extreme, but make sure you have a sharp blade to do this. Once again, you can separate these skins with scissors if you would like, but I would recommend cutting around them with an X-Acto knife. You could use scissors, but scissors won't give you a clean or straight edge as an X-Acto knife or exacto knife and a straight edge. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to separate the skins from the master sheet, being very careful where these are close together not to cut in to my skin because that's the last thing you want to do. If you do, it's not the end of the world. Um, you can always tape it, but you really want to try to avoid cutting into the skin itself. So I'm just going to very carefully, yep, separate these out. Put that one aside. Separate this wing tip off from the main part. We're going to put these aside and we're going to start. Oh, we got one more wing tip to carve off here. We're going to start with the funnest part of the airframe, which is the nose. Put these over here. We've got two sides to the nose. So I'm gonna start by cutting this first one out. I'm gonna take my straight edge and I'm gonna cut all my straight pieces first. Now realize guys, I have been doing this for 20 plus years. So you may not be as quick as me. You may be faster than me. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who are much faster than I am at this. So just make sure you slow down, pause the video if you need to, and take your time, okay? You won't regret it. I'm going to go ahead and cut these out. Be very careful with your curves. Free, you've always got to freehand your curves, so I always leave them to the last. This piece right here, it is not straight. Don't just cut that straight with your ruler. It actually has a slight curve to it. So make sure you freehand that as well. You can always come back and touch these up. And in fact, you'll notice the tip has broken off my blade. It happens a lot while I'm cutting. Um, I'm not cutting with the tip, but I'm cutting like this as I'm pressing down, the tip breaks off. I'm going to go ahead and change my blade because I want a sharp knife, especially cutting around these curves. Let's grab a new blade here. Make sure you dispose of your blades properly. You don't want somebody to be taking out the garbage in your house and 
cut themselves up. What I like to do is I like to glue it into a couple sheets of foam and then throw it away. Brand new blade, there we go. Set this aside. There we go. Now we got a brand new blade. Now we'll be a little bit more accurate in our cuts. I can freehand this. I love having a sharp blade. Those are these little pieces that I kind of missed. That's okay. Just go back and trim them up. In fact, you can trim them up when you're trimming up your foam. First skin is done. Let's set this aside and move on to the next skin. And you want to be very careful with this skin because it does scratch. If you have sharp fingernails or long fingernails, it will scratch. So just be careful until you get your polyacrylic on it to waterproof it. You won't have any problem with it scratching. But until then, just be a little bit careful. There we are. Second skin is cut out. And I'm just going to work my way from the top of the kit all the way to the bottom of the kit as it comes from the factory. You can do this in any order that you want. You can do this in different order. You can cut out all your skins and then go to, then move on to spray gluing them on so you keep your fingers nice and clean. That is totally up to you. Each skin will apply the same exact way after you get them cut out. And then you delaminate the foam and you apply it to the foam. Let's finish up by cutting out all our skins, and then we'll go on to delaminating the foam board and laminating the skins onto the delaminated foam board. Now, if you're building from the Blue Angels kit, these missiles are optional. Use a straight edge and an X-Acto knife where you can when you're cutting out these skins. And then I would put these skins somewhere out of the way so you don't accidentally cut through them as you're cutting the rest of the skins out. We're going to continue to cut out all our skins before we glue any of them on because we don't want our fingers to get sticky in the process. The more sticky our fingers are, the more likely it's going to transfer to our skin. So we'll continue to cut all these out. Take your time. This isn't something that you want to rush. You want to make sure all your lines are smooth or we want to make sure all your lines are cut straight rather. And the better, more time you take on this and the better that your skin cutting out is, skin cutting out, is that a thing? Um, the better the skin is cut out, your, the better you're going to be, the better your airframe is going to look when it's done. Take your time. Go slow if you need to. Spread it out. 
You'll notice I'm using a straight edge on every single straight edge that I can. The short ones, I'm not as worried about as long as I can freehand it correctly. But I would highly recommend, I know it seems tedious, but I would highly recommend using your straight edge on every single straight piece that you can. Using that straight edge and your knife is going to give you a straight cuts and a good looking skin. That one is done. I like to keep my work area clean. I know the building with foam can sometimes be a big chore and foam gets everywhere, but I really like to keep my work area clean. So I clean up after every time I, I make a cut or every time I finish up a, a sheet of skins just to keep my work area clean and organized. Just separating these out from the sheet itself. Whenever I'm cutting my skins, I always like to protect my skin with my straight edge or my cork back ruler. Because then, if you accidentally make a mistake, and I'll show you what I mean right here, if I'm cutting along here and I accidentally do this, I'm not cutting into my skin itself. I'm only cutting into the paper. So wherever possible, always use your cork back ruler, that's why you want to keep it clean, over the top of your skin so you don't risk cutting into your skin. Because if I were to put it on this side and make that same cut, what would happen if I went like that? I'd cut into my skin and we don't want to do that. So I always protect my skin with my cork back ruler and always cut on the outside. Take your time once again. Take your time with this step. I can't emphasize that enough. You've got to take your time cutting out these skins. Don't rush the process. Good things come to those who wait. <laughs> you want to make sure that this airframe, because it's so beautiful and so big, Okay, now that those pieces are done, before I move on to my next sheet of skin, I'm just going to take, once again, a couple seconds to pick up so my workspace always stays clean. Now on to the next sheet. My ruler's not quite long enough for this one, so I'm going to move on to a longer ruler. This ruler has seen quite a few builds, as you can tell. The numbers are all worn off. The other thing I will kind of a little pro tip here. When you buy when you're choosing a ruler, a cork back ruler to buy, buy one with the numbers engraved into the metal, not one like this used to be the numbers were printed in the metal. Um, I think I got this one in school. It's been through a ton of projects with me. But as you can see, it's no longer a ruler, it's just a straight edge because the numbers were printed on the ruler and they've all been worn off. So make sure you get those numbers. Make sure you get a cork back ruler that the numbers are engraved and not just printed on. You won't regret it.
All right. Coming right along. A couple more sheets of skin to go. We should have this bird ready to actually apply the skins to the foam board. That's my dog, Coda. She whines. That's what dogs do. All right, on these missile skins, guys, I think it's easier if you cut these two, um, or these all these small skinny pieces first before you cut anything else because then you're dealing with less flimsy paper because it has less cuts in it. So go ahead on these and make sure you uh, do those cuts first. Once again, as always, using the straight edge and X-Acto knife. That was my dog again, Coda. She barks. It's what dogs do. Now that I've got those cut out, I'm going to finish off the rest of the lines. And that'll make your life a little bit easier when you're cutting these skins out. Just kind of as a little note there. All right. Once again, I'd like to clean up my workspace. And then we're down to the last two sheets of skins. Separate these out. Okay, on this side, you're going to have to freehand this, uh, this whole curve. If you're not comfortable freehanding yet, take us out a scrap piece of paper, just eight and a half by 11, and go ahead and practice your curves. Once you feel comfortable with your curves after you've practiced, then come back to this and cut it out. 
Practice makes perfect. The other thing you can do is you can do short sections at a time. Stop, take a break, and then resume. But I would highly recommend you practice. That's the only way you're going to get good at freehanding any of these curves. I'm always looking forward ahead of my knife so that I know where I'm going to be cutting. I'm not looking directly at my knife. I'm looking ahead of it about five millimeters. Trim this little edge off and use my straight edge for the rest of this. Once again, always protecting my sheet of skin with the ruler and always cutting on the outside of the print. Here we go. Last sheet of skin. Then we can glue these all on and start our build. If you mess up here, you can just trim it up. Once again, just take your knife and trim off just a hair. You should be good to go. Last skin right here. All right, now that we have all the skins cut out, let's get to applying the skins onto the foam board. Some of the foam board has skins on both sides, so you need to pay attention to what skin goes on what side. We'll try to point these out as we go through this process. First thing you want to do, the first, the first thing we'll want to do is just pick a skin. You can start pretty much anywhere. I like to start, my, uh, I like to start at the nose um, and work my way back. You can pretty much start anywhere. Just pick a skin, find the coordinating piece on the foam, cut the... You can start pretty much anywhere. Just pick a skin, find the coordinating piece within the foam kit, cut the piece out, punch the piece out. You can start pretty much anywhere. Just pick a piece... You can start pretty much anywhere. Just pick a skin, Find the coordinating piece, find the cor uh. you can start, you can start pretty much anywhere. Just pick a skin, find the coordinating piece in the foam board. You can start pretty much anywhere. You can start anywhere. You can start pretty much anywhere. Just pick a skin, find the coordinating piece in the laser cut foam, punch it out, and then delaminate and then laminate back on. We'll post a link to our lamination video and delamination video in the description below. The thing you have to pay attention to is that some pieces of foam require skins on both sides. As we go through this process, we'll point out which ones go where. Just pay attention and you'll be just fine. I'm going to start with some of these easier pieces, namely the armament, the missiles that are included. And by the way, these missiles are only included with the quick kits. If you're downloading the free plans, these are not included. So I'm going to take these and punch them out of the foam. Once again, cutting the tabs that were, are in place for manufacturing purposes. And then very carefully punching the foam board piece out of the frame. Okay. Now there's multiples of these, so I'm going to find the other ones and do them at the same time. There should be four in total. And be careful, once again, because you've got pieces in here, you should pull them out. Cut the manufacturing tabs, and these pieces should punch right out. If they don't punch out, just trace over them with a knife. We 
which I like to do anyway because it ensures I get a clean cut. Now this piece. The quick kits come with two missiles, one for each wing. They are surely optional and surely aesthetic. They are glued in place. So don't feel like you have to include these missiles. Especially on the Blue Angel skin. Don't feel like you need to include them. Okay, now that I've found my foam board pieces and punched them out, you should have two of each. Two that look like this, and two that look like this. They're exactly the same. Now I'm going to go back and find the skins. There are twice as many skins, one for each side of the foam board. So I have four of these and four of these. Just have to get back through my skins and find those pieces. There's one, there's the other two. So now we're going to take our foam board. Now that we found all our skins, we're going to take our foam board and we're going to peel off the paper on each side. This is a double laminated piece. It gets skins on both sides. So we're going to peel the foam off or the paper off both sides. Just like so. You shouldn't need your spray bottle and your water. The pieces are small enough. So I'm going to go ahead and do this on all the pieces of foam. Now that that's done, I'm going to take my skin and I'm going to spray the skin. I never spray the foam because sometimes the propellant in the spray glue will eat through the foam. So I'm always going to spray the skin. Take it to a well ventilated area. Don't forget to shake your can well and go ahead and spray your first piece of skin. Hold it up. Line it up. Take your speedball roller and roll it out. Repeat the same process on the other side. Once again, do a dry fit. Looks pretty good. Let's go spray. Line it up. Roll it out. Once again, be careful on the edges, because if you're not careful on the edges, you'll squish the foam. Now you notice the laser cut undercut these a little bit. You could fill those with glue, and they'll be just perfect. Okay? There's one. On to the next one. Dry fit. Line it up. Roll it out. These are probably the easiest pieces we'll skin today. Here we go. First set of skins is complete. Actually, it's the second set of skins is complete. Set these pieces aside and on to the next. Let's do the vertical stabilizers. Once again, locate all the pieces, all your vertical stabilizers. There should be two sided. So there should be four skins. Once we get that done, Locate them in the foam. There's one. Gonna punch the tabs out. Punch the piece out. There we go. There's two vertical stabilizers with a skin on each side of the two for a total of four. Now that I've got these two vertical stabilizers, I'm going to test fit or dry fit the skins just to make sure they work. Those two work. 
This one works over here, and this one works right there. Perfect. Now we can spray the skins and attach them to this. But first, let's peel back the foam. Grab a corner and just start peeling back. There's one. And because these are double-sided, we're going to do both. There's two. Sometimes, even if the pieces aren't double-sided with the skins, we delaminate both sides. And I'll show you why a little bit later. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and spray our skins and apply them to the foam. Line it up, press it down, roll it out. Over. Now you'll notice with these skins, there's two of them with logos on them and, and the text on them, and two that are plain. These are the insides, these two are the outsides. So make sure that they're side specific. They only go on one way, but just make sure you don't glue these two pieces back to back. Otherwise you'll have logos. Not going to affect the performance, it's only going to affect the way they look. Otherwise, you have two logos on one fin and nothing on the other. So double check. Yep, exactly what we want. Roll it out. Set this piece aside. Okay. Next, we're going to do the other vertical stabilizer. We're going to start with either side, doesn't matter. Test fit, dry fit, I always dry fit. Always, always dry fit. Lay it down, line it up. Press down, use my speedball roller. Let's do the other side. If it's not perfect, you can always pull it up with most spray glues, you can pull them up and reapply them until you've used that speed roll, ball roller and that pretty much seals the deal. Cool, all done. Let's move on to the next piece. Put that aside. I'm going to pick the canopy now. Canopy is single sided. Oh, look who it is. It's the guys from the West Texas Design Facility. Rick, the designer of the Wasp. How are you, buddy? Good. What's going on? Good. Hey. So we're just actually here doing the build video. And uh, really? you, you had a uh, perfect timing, man. Perfect timing. We're just working on getting these skins put on. Right on, right on. Yeah. I like, I like the Blue Angel one a lot. Be great. Yes, it is. It's going to be very good. Very cool. Has it got any uh, crash proof uh, proofing in it? I could really use that. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys have been following us on social media, you uh, have a really good idea of what he's talking about right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's been a few mishaps already. <laughs> Even yet, just two days ago, I crashed one. Uh oh. Yeah. yeah. What'd you crash this time? Uh, it's a Corsair. Oh, okay. We won't tell corporate. No, don't let them know. Don't let them know. <laughs> right? <laughs> so how's it going with the assembly? Oh, you know. Uh, doing good? Yeah, we're doing great. Uh, we're, uh, sorry, I'm trying to get him so he can see me a little bit better. Um, yeah, we're just, uh, we just got done cutting out all the skins, and now we're uh, actually applying them to the foam. So on this piece, you guys, you'll see right here, you'll want to make sure this skin is on this side, not the side with the score lines, but the side here. So peel the uh, foam off, the paper off the foam right here, like so. Opposite side of the score lines, keep that in mind. So uh, Rick. Yes, sir. What, uh, what you guys been up to down there in West Texas? Not doing much. <laughs> that sounds like a typical West, West Texas right there. Oh, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> so, uh, building planes and goofing off. So, um, 
with this piece, I find it easier sometimes to turn the skin down on your table and then center it up. And you'll see the reason for that when we get to building the airframe. Center it up the best you can, press it down and speedball roll it. So Rick, I want you to tell uh, what we got you on the horn here. Um, tell everybody a little bit about the wasp, Ben. Tell them what was your thinking, why you did what you did, and tell them a little bit about it. The man himself is here. Well, uh, getting into our planes, um, two of my favorite planes were the, the modern day plane F-18 and the older uh, World War II plane, the Corsair. And I started out with uh, looking around for a plan for it, just couldn't find one that was you know, easy to build, good to fly, you know, easy to fly. I was still learning to fly with ailerons and I wanted something that, something that was just a All right, had a little technical difficulty there, but uh, what we did was we skinned this side Remember, this piece goes on, the half piece goes on the side with the score cuts, and the full piece goes on the side without the score cuts. Last thing we got to do is we're going to cut these in, and you can actually do it from the back side. Through the skin on both. Next piece, let's do the wing tips. There's one wing tip. There's two of these. There's one. Very simple to cut out. Now we're skinning on the side that doesn't have the score lines. So this back side. So go ahead and peel the foam off. The back sides. Test fit our pieces. And we can go ahead and spray. Line it up. Speed ball hit down. If you don't knock your glue gun over. And just like that, we have one wing tip done. Now we'll move on to the next one. Again, line it up. Roll it out. Now the wing tips are done, we're gonna set them aside. And what else is next on top? We're just gonna pick these two pieces and they are on this sheet of foam. These don't matter which side, as long as you make sure they line up. Dry fit, yep. Peel the skin off. Let's go ahead and peel the skin off this one while we're at it. Just like so. Moving on to the next piece. On sheet four, this piece. Gonna peel the skin off of the side without the score line. Once again, dry fit it. Bottom half of the wing. 
All right. There's two of these, so let's just go ahead and separate them from the foam. Cutting the little tabs. Should come right out. Set that piece aside for just a minute. And then we're going to go on to cutting this other piece out. And that will do it for sheet two. All right. Let's find our two wings. These are the underside of the wing. Dry fits perfectly. Now we're going to go spray this. All right, be careful, because this is the side you want to skin. Once again, it's not the side with the score lines. It's the side without the score lines. You always want to skin the side without the score lines. We're going to peel off the paper. It should come off fairly easily. And in this case, because we're getting warpage of the skin, or of the piece of foam board, we are going to peel off both sides because we want this to sit completely flat. You're not going to lose any structural strength because our skins actually add a lot of strength to the foam board. So now, the piece sits perfectly flat, and you don't have to worry about that curvature of the paper or of the foam board when you're skinning it. Line it up. Good. Roll it out. Perfect. Set the skin aside. Repeat the same thing for the other side. Again, see the curvature? Once you peel the paper off the other side, it will eliminate that curvature. These bigger pieces, you may want to use your water bottle. Make sure you let the foam, if you use your water bottle, make sure you let the foam dry completely before applying your skin. Now that we've eliminated the curve in the foam, we can go ahead, dry fit this. This little guy, this piece is a, is the motor mount or power pod and you'll learn why we are skinning this piece a little bit later on. We don't normally skin the insides of the airframe, but there's two pieces of this airframe that we wanted to skin for not only strength, but sheer aesthetics. Once again, score cuts on the inside, peel the foam back. This one shouldn't work too bad, so we're just going to dry fit it. There we go. And we'll spray it. Make sure you put this skin on correctly. There's a right way and a wrong way. If it doesn't look right, flip it around. On to the tail feathers. All right, this is on sheet three. This sheet, this piece of foam is going to get skins on both sides. So we'll want to delaminate both sides of the foam. If you're having a little problem with a piece like this, just roll your finger. You need to wet your finger a little bit and it should roll right up. 
Now you got to be careful with this piece that you don't separate like I did. If you do, it's okay. The skin will hold it together, but just be careful because that is a score cut, and if you pull too hard, you'll you'll break that uh, aileron off, or sorry, you'll break that elevator off like I just did. No worries. We will show you how to handle it. Let's get in a little piece here. And a little piece there. There we go. Now what I'm going to do is the top piece is actually the piece without all the score lines. So this actually is the inside right here of the airframe. So score lines get the piece with the black running down the center. Once again, score lines get the piece with the black running down the center. This is the top, this is the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna separate this one elevator that came off. I'm gonna laminate the rest of it and then I'll flip it over and apply this piece, okay? All right, try not to get the spray glue on your, your work surface because it will get all over everything. So I'm gonna line this up. Perfect. Push down. Before I get done, I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna put this piece in place. After I delaminate it. Totally forgot to delaminate this piece. There we go. I was wondering why it was so curved. All right, now that that's in place, and you'll notice it's not quite perfectly on. That's okay, we can trim it up and it should be just fine. I'm going to flip it over and we'll do this backside. This is actually the top. Make sure you roll that really good. I'm gonna cut these out. Onto this piece next. We're gonna be skinning on the opposite side of the score lines. This piece, you can go ahead and not delaminate both sides. The curve will come out of it when we glue it in place. Just like that. Once again, always check, but you're gonna skin the side that doesn't have the score lines. Test fit. This is gonna be another one of those pieces where I'm going to probably want to double check that and mount and glue it upside down. So this is a piece I'm going to, I sprayed the back side. I'm gonna take this upside down I'm going to center it up. Best I can. Flip it over. And once again, just roll it out. Okay. The non laminated side. Dry fit, perfect. Another piece I'm gonna to wanna to lay down on my table. And line this up. Roll it out. This is the other difficult piece. These two big pieces, but we're almost done skinning. So, this piece right here is probably the second hardest piece to skin. We're skinning both sides, so let's take off the foam on both sides. Take off the paper on both sides, rather.
Once again, if the score lines crack apart, it's okay. You'll be fine. Let's just put them back on once we get to that point. Both those cracked off, that's okay. We're gonna start by skinning this side. This side without the score lines, once again, is the outside. So we want this skin, All right? We're gonna test fit it. Looks like it fits pretty good. Now we're gonna go spray. All right. Take a deep breath and we will get to this part. If you need to roll it back on itself, I've done this numerous times. Just go ahead and do that. This is not a scary process. Just get your fingers a little tacky and roll it back on itself. And I'm gonna lay this down right where it needs to be. Perfect. I'm gonna work my way forward, making sure everything lines up. Beautiful. Now, flip it over, and the two parts that came off, I'm just gonna go ahead and stick them right back down. Just like so, and like so. All right, now that side's done, we can go ahead and peel the foam, or the paper, off of this side. And this side. All right, take care of my mess here. side with the scores gets this big piece with a black on it. There we go. Test fit it. Looks pretty good. Let's go spray it. Fold this back on itself. Grab it by the edges. The reason why we fold it back on itself is because then the printed surface is going towards the printed surface. You don't have to worry about ruining your print. Roll it forward. All right, okay, let's speedball this really quickly. There we go. Perfect. Now we're gonna set this piece aside. That was the hardest piece. Now all we have left is the wings and we're done with the skinning, we start the build. The wings and the wing tips. So we want to delaminate this side, okay? So, I'm gonna peel the paper off. This is the top of the wing. And in this situation, we're gonna delaminate this side of the wing as well. Right there. And this goes here. Perfect. Line that up. Roll it out. All right. You'll notice it's not 100% perfect, that's okay. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing, repeat the same process on this side. Always dry fit. Pretty good. 
roll it out. All right, flip it over once again. Always dry fit it. And this is the last piece we have to skin. Alrighty, that was the last piece of skin that we had to apply to the foam board. Let's get on to building this airframe. All right, so we're going to start with the wings. So we're going to get both our wing halves and the top and the bottom of the wings. These are the pieces you'll need. There's four of them. Let's see if I can show them all here. The two wing halves, the top, they look like this on the other side. and the two wing halves on the bottom. So, let's pick a side. We're going to take our wing half here, and we're going to take a sharp razor blade, and we're going to cut along this line. Now, the reason why we didn't score cut this in the laser, or we didn't laser cut this in the foam, was because we didn't know where your skin was going to exactly line up, and we want this to be as custom as possible. You're doing a score cut, you're not doing it all the way through cut. Repeat the same process on this line and this line. Score cut only. And a score cut here. Now, you're going to take your barbecue skewer and you're going to run it down these score lines you've just created. This is going to help hold the wingtip in the proper shape. It's also going to add structural support to the wingtip. After we get that done, we're going to take our wing, bring it to the edge of the table, and we're just going to very gently mold this wing over. Give it just an ever so slight curve. Just like that. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our aileron and free up our aileron. So cut right along this line, like so, all the way down, and there's our aileron. All right? And those should help hold the shape of the wing. This is the wrong one. Here we go. We're going to join these along the leading edge. Okay? If we flip this over, you'll see that these will join right along that leading edge of the airframe. Okay? We're going to take our duck brand easy start tape. It's the green stuff. And with these two wings top and bottom put together on the leading edge we're going to take our tape and run it all the way down perfect just going to cut this off right here my knife and at this point my knife once again is pretty dull I'm going to change my blade after cutting all those skins out. Now that I have a sharp blade, I'm going to take this wing, just going to trim up the tape while you are doing this whole process. Um, if you have a skin that delaminates, it's okay. Just throw a little dab of hot glue underneath there and you won't have a problem with it again. Now that we got this tape down, make sure that's good and good against the foam. It looks like it is. I'm going to flip this wing over, bevel the side of this wing right here. So I fold it back on itself. All right, to do my bevels, I usually like to take a razor, a uh, utility knife blade, bring it over to the edge of the table, and 
if you want your bevels to be perfectly straight, and it's kind of nice actually, take a ruler and just lay it along that leading edge of the foam, and then go ahead and just start cutting that foam back, just like so. Take it a little bit more. I'm going to go all the way to the edge, all the way along that leading edge. Right here, take just a hair more there, just like that. Okay, do the same thing, <clears throat> excuse me, with the other side. Where this skin meets it, I'm just going to cut it back straight back without going through the other piece. Take my ruler once again, right on the edge of the table, holding my ruler. I'm just going to go ahead and start slicing through this. If you need to go over it two or three times, that's perfectly okay. Take a little bit of time if you need to. Now that we got, now that we have our bevel in the foam, we should be able to fold this over and makes a nice sharp clean edge. If it doesn't, go ahead and take a little bit more foam off. A little bit more in here. That's okay. And now you should have a nice sharp edge all the way along your leading edge, which we do. Perfect. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is there's some score lines. Now they may be a little bit hard to see on the other side, but you can see them. These are where the spar goes. There's two spars, and you're going to want to dig these pieces of foam out. I just like take my razor blade, my X-Acto knife, and just lightly work that foam out. Careful not to go through the paper on the other side. There. Now that we have those dug out, grab two of the three spars. One, two, three. These are the three spars. These two go in the wing tips. You'll see what I mean. This is the main spar. So let's just separate the main spar from the foam. You should be able to punch this out. Perfect. And we'll separate, we might as well go ahead and separate both these wingtip spars at the same time. Now that we have all the three spars, separated from the foam. Let's just retrace the score lines. Don't go all the way through the paper. If you do, it's not the end of the world. And I'm going to fold this back on itself. Looks pretty good. We're going to grab our, grab our hot glue gun. And we're going to apply a liberal amount of glue to this spar. And fold it over. Be careful not to burn yourself. We're going to take a scrap piece of foam and just clean up the edge. Set that one aside. Do the same thing with both of the wingtip spars. Now we have that spar. Fold it over. Repeat the same process on the last spar. Now that we have all three spars prepped, we can take our wing, we take the spar, and we test fit it into our pieces. Now, if it doesn't quite fit all the way, that's just fine. Just, if you didn't clean that gap out quite enough, just come back in and go ahead and clean out the rest of the foam that you missed. I just like to hold the spar along it 
to, to make sure I've got enough of the foam cleaned out. Once we have that done, we can go ahead and test fit this into our spar, into our wing. Looks like we need to do just a little bit more cleanup, which is okay. That looks like it's gonna fit pretty dang good. If we have to crush these just a bit to make them easier to go into the holes. And just like that, that wing, that spar, you're gonna to want to sit perfectly flat against the inside of the wing. So make sure it does before you glue it in place. Pretty good. Just like that. Perfect. Now, we're gonna apply glue in each hole, a liberal amount. We don't want this to go anywhere. This is the structural support of the wing. And then we're gonna apply glue a liberal amount on the other underside of the spar. I'm gonna put it in place. And we're gonna hold it till it dries. Don't rush this process. You wanna make sure that your glue is completely dry before you let go. After that's dry, thoroughly dry, we want to repeat the same process with this spar. Just make sure we've cleaned this out enough, which I clearly have not. That seems to fit really good. Now with this, what I like to do is I like to take a pen and mark right where that spar is in the middle. What that will allow me to do is that will allow me to know how far I need to apply my glue. Remember, this half of this spar goes in the other wing. So we want to make sure that we only glue this half of the wing for now. I'm going to come in here with my glue gun, apply a liberal amount of glue here, only to my mark. That's why we made that orange mark or whatever color yours may be, only to my mark. And I'm gonna take my spar and glue it in the wing and hold it till it's completely dry. Now, if you wanna extra strengthen your spars, you can go ahead and take your glue gun and run a bead of glue right down the inside of the wing, the spar on either side. That'll just give a little bit more strength and add, add that to the strength of the overall wing. I'm gonna set this wing aside, this part of the wing aside, and I'm gonna focus my attention on the other half of the wing. Repeating the same process that we did before. Starting on the skin side of the wing, take my tape all the way down. Make sure your wings are where you wanna be before you apply that tape, because once you apply the tape to the skin, you will not be getting it off. I usually like to tape it to the table like this and then work my way down, working my way all along the leading edge, making sure there are no wrinkles. Trim off the excess. Make sure it's nice down nice and firm. Run my fingernails all over it. You'll see that it's pressing it down. Come over here, flip it over, and let's bevel our inside edges. All right, so now I'm gonna take my razor, my utility razor, I should say, and my ruler over to the edge of the table. I'm going to go ahead and cut this in. Once again, if you need to make multiple passes on this, go ahead. It's not a big deal. Same thing on the other side. 
You want that leading edge to be nice and crisp, nice and sharp. Once we get that done, let's just fold this over briefly. If your leading edge isn't nice and crisp and sharp, go back and trim it just a little bit. Now that leaning edge is nice and sharp, we're going to come back on the inside of the wing, and once again, we're going to clean out our cavities for our spars. You need to hold your spar up to there, to it, to see, to make sure you have the right amount cleared out. Go ahead and do so. It always helps. The spar should go right to the edge of the wing. Once you've got these cavities cleared out, let's dry fit our spar. Once again, if you need to crush down just a hair, that helps light it up. Make sure it's perfectly flat against the inside of the wing. And at this point, we can bring in our other wing half, just like so, and that's perfect. Now that we know that fits, and it lines up. Let's bring in our glue gun. We're going to apply a liberal amount of glue here. Hold it down, wait for it to dry. Once again, once that's dry, we can come along on the inside and just put a small bead of glue on either side of the spar. That'll just strengthen it that much more. And now, when you fold this over, that wing should take on a nice wing shape with a flat bottom. It looks really good. All right, now before we seal up our wings and glue them together, we have to install a couple servos and servo extensions. Here I have two 9 gram Hanger RC digital metal gear servos. I'm gonna go ahead and open these up. You can pick these up in our store at shop.thehangerrc.com. And one thing you'll want to do with these servos before you install them is you're going to want to center them up. You can do the centering one of two ways. You can either use your transmitter and a receiver and center them up that way by making sure you have zero trim, plugging them into your transmitter and receiver, and obviously your ESC and battery. And that way, you have zero trim and your sticks are neutral, your servo will be neutral as well. I am going to go ahead and use my servo centering tool. What you need to center a servo is a battery, an ESC, your servo, and your servo centering tool. I'm going to take my servo with the servo arm. I'm going to plug it into the out of my servo tester, taking note of polarity. I'm going to plug my ESC into the in of my servo tester, taking note of polarity. And then I'm going to plug my battery into my ESC. Now, with this particular servo tester, there's three different settings. There is a manual setting, which I'm on right now. There is a center, and then there is a back and forth. And you'll see this better as I put the servo arm on. But for now, I want to neutral or center my servo. And I'm going to want to look at my wing to make sure I'm putting this uh, servo arm correctly, on correctly. So this is the aileron, and I want to make sure that my servo arm points down. So it's going to point just like that. Perfect. So I know that's on correctly. I know it's centered. I can go ahead and put my little screw in, grab a screwdriver, and go ahead and screw that screw in. 
that servo is centered and ready to go. Now, I told you I'd show you what the back and forth motion of my servo tester was. If you look at that, you can see the servo will go the full, full range of the arm. Manual, put it in any position, neutral or centered, and then back and forth. Now I know that's centered. I can unplug this, set my servo tester in the SCS side, and focus my attention on mounting this servo. Now, what you're gonna wanna do is take these stickers off because you don't want to glue the sticker to the foam and then have the sticker come loose in flight. So I like to take both stickers off, depending on the application, and you can either take your knife and score up. And what this does, the side of the servo, is this just gives the glue something to adhere to. Be careful. Or you can take a piece of sandpaper and sand that side of the servo. I like the sandpaper method. I feel like it grips a little bit better and it the glue sticks to it just that much better. So now that I've sanded both sides of that, um, if you really want a really good grip, get some uh, alcohol and just wipe this off. Just some rub rubbing alcohol will be fine. We're going to go ahead and take our control arm and we're going to drill a hole in the center. To drill this hole, I just like to use my X-Acto knife and I like to usually go somewhere in the center. So one of the center two holes. So in this case, I'm going to go third one down from the top. And I'm just going to take my, my X-Acto knife and I'm going to drill just a little hole. And I'll tell you why I'm going to drill a hole. There's a couple of reasons. First of all, our push rod wire, we specifically order it a little bit thicker so that you don't get as much flex in the push rod wire. The second reason is, is because we like to um, use these little cable stops. I don't know if you can see that. Um, we like to use those little guys. They really help adjusting your ailerons and elevators your control surfaces while you're out in the field. So what I do is I drill that hole and I slip this little guy through the hole. You have to make sure you can rotate freely. So otherwise, you're, as the servo moves, you won't be able to move and your push rod will just bend or it'll stop your servo. Let me put the little end on. And then what I like to do is I like to take a dab of glue and just glue the end to keep that nut from falling off. And that's it. You're going to want to repeat that exact same process with all four servos. So go ahead and do that now. Let's unpackage your hanger servos. If you ordered a power kit from us, We're going to center these servos up using our, in this case, the 30 amp ESC. Um, and the only reason we're 30 amp is because I had it easily accessible. I just grabbed it. Um, in this airframe, it requires a 50 amp ESC. So we don't need the rest of these parts. So we can just put them back in the bag and save them for some other airframe or some other servo. Um, set these aside. Okay, my screwdriver. Okay, once again, let's run through this. You're going to take your servos, and in this case, my servo tester, can, I can hook up three servos to it. Make sure you observe the polarity. Don't want to burn anything up. Take my ESC and go into the in, observing polarity. Take my, in this case, my uh, 2200-4S Venom battery. Thank you much, Venom. It was an awesome, awesome giveaway, and I appreciate you guys sending me 
the stuff. I, it's, it, I love my battery. I love my charger. It's awesome. Thank you. So we're going to take these, and I'm going to make sure this is on center, which it wasn't. So now they're all centered up. Then I can take, you want to make sure you observe how the servos are going to be in the, in the aircraft. So you want to definitely pay attention to that. So, these are going to be the elevators. Remember, there's two servos for the elevator and one servo for each aileron. No rudder in this case. Okay. And then these are going to be for the elevators. And one's going to go in the wing this way. And you can always rotate these later if you need to, if you mess up. You can always, once you get these in the airframe, you can recenter it up and position the control horns where you want them. I'm just going to go back and double check all the screws, including that one. On these nuts, you can actually use thread locker or what's more commonly known as Loctite. Um, I've had pretty good success with just putting the hot glue on the edges of these. Um, so the choice is up to you. If you want to do the Loctite, that's, that's fine as well. Cool thing about the way we designed this airframe is that all the servos are accessible. Every single one of them. So if you have one go bad or you break a control horn or not control horn if you break a servo arm um, you know whatever happens uh, you can always repair them these little washers and my fat fingers that's a little bit hard but well worth it let's do the last servo Really, at this point, you could unplug your ESC. Um, I kept mine on for some reason, but because you've already got the once you have the control, uh, the servo control arm, or the servo arm, uh, once you have the servo arm on the servo, and the only reason it's not going to be centered is if you take it off. And then I'm going to go back and put a dab of glue on each one of these little. Dab of glue and a dab of glue. Okay, now that that's finished up, I can unplug these, set my battery and my servo tester aside, my ESC. Now that our servos are all prepared and ready to go in our airframe, we can turn our attention back towards the wing. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to take this wing first, we're going to take our servo, and a couple things you want to make sure. You want to take your push rod, which is right here. There's two different lengths of push rod. There's a long one, there's two long ones, and two short ones. You want to make sure you use one of the short ones. These are six inches. And you just want to make sure there's going to be enough room for that push rod to control the servo. Okay. So you can place it anywhere along here you like, along this surface right here. I don't know if you can see that. You can place it anywhere along that surface right there. Just make sure you have enough for that aileron control. Okay? So this servo, I have to now sand because I guess I spaced doing that. Now that our servos are all prepared and prepped, we can turn our attention back to the wing. First thing you want to do is make sure your servo, in this case, you want to make sure your servo arm is pointing down. Um, so you're going to have to kind of pick up the wing a little bit or just move your wing over to the edge. So 
where I like to put my servos in this arm is about halfway, okay, between the spar and the trailing edge. Between the spar and the trailing edge. So I'm going to put my servo, I'm going to grab my hot glue gun, and just put some glue here, make sure it's enough. And then I'm just going to actually stick this down once again. Line it up with the front of the edge of the paper. And I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to hold it here. You can kind of see where it needs to go. It's right at the edge of the paper, right at the edge of the foam. I'm just going to hold it down until that glue dries. And then I'm going to take my glue gun and just put a little bit extra around the edges just so we know it's not going to move. Once that's done, this is where your servo extension leads are going to come into play. I'm going to take in a servo extension lead. I'm going to plug it into the servo. Once again, noting polarity. And the thing about this is you always want to test this before you seal up your wing because it'd be really hard to gain access. Now, something I've learned that's kind of fun um, is I will take this servo extension lead and I will, you'll see me glue it right there. That way, if I ever need to replace the servo, I don't have to tear my whole wing apart to get to the servo. I can just unplug it and go from there. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this servo extension lead, I'm going to put some glue on it, and I'm going to place it right up against the spar, sticking out the end of the wing so that I can unplug that servo if I ever need to. Wait till that dries. And then one thing you can do is if you want, you can take this servo lead and glue it all the way along the spar. And I just put a dab of glue, a dab of glue, a dab of glue, and just let it dry. That way it'll give you something when you pull this if you ever have to replace the servo, when you pull that servo wire out, it'll give you something to pull against and you won't end up just pulling your, your servo uh, extension um, out of place. So just make sure that you put enough on there to hold it in place and give this quite a bit of time to dry. Once that's dry and in place, we can turn our attention to the other half of the wing. Once again, you want to be working on the outside edge of the wing, so this side of the wing. Take my servo that's all prepped and ready to go, put some glue on it, and put it in place approximately halfway between the spar and the trailing edge. Just line up with the edge of the foam, and you should be good to go. Okay, while that's drying or finishing drying, be careful not to push down on that servo. The other thing you can do is you can actually rotate your servo arm, and then you can push down flat. But while that's drying, I'm going to take my servo extension, make sure I'm observing polarity once again, which I am. Take my hot glue gun on the one side and glue it right up against that outside of that spar. That way I can get to it and unplug it if I absolutely need to. It makes life a lot easier. These extension wires are 30 inches. 30 inch wires. And hold it in place. Give it sufficient time to dry. You don't want to rush this process. You want that servo extension wire to stay in place. Now it's time to join our two wing halves together and uh, finish up the wing. So first thing we're going to do is this cavity right here. We're going to remove it. I'm going to go over the score lines with my X-Acto knife. Make sure you don't cut through the skin on the other side. If you do, it's not the end of the world. Just use some tape, patch it up. Okay, once you have this cavity dug out, this piece is going to fold up and over, just like so. Okay, you're going to have a little extra skin here you can cut off or you can tuck it. Either way, but that piece will fold up and over like that. 
So the first thing you're going to do is take some glue and fill the cavity. No, not fill the cavity, but put some in the cavity. Put a thin bead in the cavity and a thin bead along the trailing edge. And we're going to fold it up. Don't burn yourself on this step. Okay. Repeat the same process on the other side of the wing. So at any time you have your skin delaminate during this process, probably means you didn't put enough spray glue on it. However, it's okay. Just take a little hot glue and being careful because it will be hot. Press it down gently and you'll never have that skin delaminate again. Okay, now we're ready to glue this. Once again, small bead of glue here. Small bead of glue here. Careful not to burn yourself. Done it many a times. All right. Now that piece is folded up and sufficiently dry. Um, we're going to join, fold over, and join our two wing halves. So we're going to start with this wing, the wing that has the two spars in it. We're going to turn our attention towards this wing and I'm just going to put a little notch in this spar, not too big, just enough for that servo control wire to go through it. And I'm just going to put a little glue down in there just to hold it in place. Once you, we fold over the wing, that will be, that will can also help hold it in place. Repeat the same process on the other side. Just a little notch in your spar. Just enough for that piece, that wire to sit down flat. A little bit of glue. Put the wire in. Okay, before we glue and fold over the wings, we need to cut our aileron free. All you're doing in this case is you're going through the skin into the score line that's already pre-cut into the foam. If you just follow this line on the skin right here, then you'll cut right into that score line. Don't go all the way through the paper. Okay, now that that's done, we can break this free. You wanna make sure you break this free before you Fold the wing over and glue the wing. Had a little bit of delamination here. Once again, not that big a deal. Just going to pull it down, put some hot glue on it, pull it back, put some hot glue on it. Okay. Now, once our ailerons are cut free, we can go ahead and fold over the wings. Now we're going to turn our attention towards folding over the wings and then gluing them together. We're going to start with the wing with the both spars, with the two spars. We're going to put glue here along the leading edge, glue along this spar, glue along this spar, but from here, the center, to here, and then glue along this um, little lump there. Glue along the trailing edge here and here. And then you can also put glue on the top of the servo and that will help hold it. Let's just do a dry fit. The spar should, the bottom of the wing should sit flat against the table. Which in this case it does, and it gives us a really good airfoil shape. So now, make sure you have plenty of hot glue and a hot glue gun that can deliver enough glue. We're going to start by going down the leading edge. Next, the spar. The second spar. Servo, trailing edge, and trailing edge. I come in just a little bit, about a quarter of an inch, on that other on the this trailing edge here. Now that we have that done, we're going to fold over our wing. Make sure the leading edge stays flat against the table, and we're going to put some pressure down on this. 
focusing on the two areas over the spars and the two areas on the trailing edge of the wing. On this side of the wing, we're going to grab our other wing that we just folded over and we're just going to do a test fit here. Now, you'll notice that those two spars are going to crunch up against each other, the two, these two main spars. That's a good thing. We want to make sure it's a nice tight fit on the bottom. Looks like it is. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to take my spar, my second spar that goes through both wings. I'm going to glue that in place as well as I'm going to glue right along here on the bottom of the, of the wing. Okay, and we'll come back and tape it afterwards. Put some glue here, put some glue in here, and then where that spar needs to go. Take this, set it flat against the table, make sure my spar goes into place. I'm going to push these two wings of halves together, ensuring that the leading edge and the trailing edge line up. Now you want to, don't rush this process, you want to hold it firm and hold it long enough for that glue to take hold. Because we're not going to be taping this till after the glue's dry. To help reinforce this spar, I'm just going to go on the insides of it. Need a new glue gun, a glue stick. Not a glue gun. I love my glue gun. All right. Once that's thoroughly dry, we can go ahead and we want to make sure these servo wires are run out the front of the wing. The front of the wing has a notch in it where it fits into the fuselage. We're going to want to make sure those servo wires are run out there. And then, once this is thoroughly dry, we can go ahead and fold over and glue this other wing. Want to test fit it first. Looks pretty good. If you have a gap in the middle of these wings, don't worry about it because the fuselage will actually support that. If we tape over it, it'll be just fine. So don't worry about if you have a slight gap here. Okay, now that this wing is dry, I'm going to take my hot glue gun, make sure I have plenty of glue. Leading edge, along this spar, along this spar, servo, top of servo, along the trailing edge. And then the last place you're going to want to glue is you want to make sure that you glue, even if you have a gap, you can put a little bit of glue along this inside. Once again, this is all going to be covered within the airframe. So if you're a little bit sloppy like I was, it's going to be okay. Focusing that attention on the leading edge and over the spars and on the trailing edge. Wait till that dries and then we can set our wing aside. Wing stuck to the table, just wiggle it and it'll come up. Now, if you let go and you have your weight off of it and the wing springs back, you've got to hold it longer. Okay, make sure it's nice and dry. Do not rush this step. On to the next step. We're going to take some tape, some packaging tape. We're going to flip the wing over to the underside. Just peel off our little glue dabs. I'm going to take my tape, run right down the center of that joint. Make sure it's pressed down nice and good against the foam. Take my knife and trim off the excess. On the trailing edge, we're just going to take this tape, flip the wing over, and we're going to wrap it right around to the top. Take another piece of tape. This is going to be awesome. I love this wing. I love when I get to this point because it looks it's starting to look like an airplane, and I love that. That's one of the reasons I like to do the wing first, because it really does start to look like you have, you've made a lot of progress. I'm going to take, trim off the front. Don't cut your servo wires. 
something you don't want to do. Take this bottom, and I'm going to trim it a little bit long just so I can wrap it back over the bottom. Once again, make sure this tape's pressed down. Don't worry about if you wrinkle it because this whole section right here is going to be covered by the fuselage. So you don't have to worry about it looking pretty like you would on a, on a uh, high wing because most of this is going to be covered. Just make sure it's pressed down against that skin nice and solid. Next step with the wings. So we're going to take our and cut our ailerons in. I'm going to grab my X-Acto blade. I'm going to fold my aileron up using my ruler because I like these to be nice and clean. I'm going to cut my bevel into the aileron side. Using my ruler to make it nice and straight, bring it to the edge of the table. I'm going to make sure I don't cut through the paper. Don't cut your fingers either. I'm just going to cut my bevel there. You may have to go over this a couple different times so that you have an angle shallow enough to allow that aileron to move freely. Okay. Once you've got that done, we can check it to make sure it moves freely. Now, if there's a little stickage here with the, with the wing, all you have to do is take a little bit and run your razor blade down this and just trim it up ever so slightly. And once that's trimmed up, you should be plenty good to go with free movement of your aileron. Just make sure that aileron moves freely. All right? Make sure it moves perfectly freely. That's the most important. You don't want to put the extra strain on your servos. So make sure this aileron moves freely. After we get that done, I always like to tape my hinges. Makes the plane look a little bit not quite as good, but I think the longevity you get out of it is totally worth it. So I just come over here. You can even line it up with the lines on the skin. Make it look a little bit less noticeable. And make sure you get that down, press down, good. And then trim up the edge. Now the one thing you have to do is you're going to have to recut your aileron. Just take your X-Acto knife or your utility knife blade and just make sure that you free up that aileron. Okay, looks pretty good. All pressed down nice. And repeat the same process on the other side of the wing, on the other aileron. Now that we've got both ailerons cut in and beveled and make sure they are both free, one thing I like to do is just run my finger and sharpen up that edge on both ailerons. That will help them bend just a little bit more. And you can also work them back and forth to make that tape less stiff so that the servo does not have a hard time moving that aileron. Let's flip our wing over. Bring our servos back to the somewhat neutral position. We're going to focus our attention on the push rods, the control horns, and linking them up to our servos. This tool is amazing. It's 20 bucks. I think we got it on Amazon. It's a control rod bending tool. It makes your life a lot easier. Our control rods uh, come pre-bent, so you really don't need this tool, but if you're building other airframes or you're building from the plans, you'll definitely want to get you a pair of these. These are amazing. You don't realize how much you love them until, you, um, until you've had a chance to use them. 
I, didn't, I thought, no, I'll never get some of those. I've, I'll always just bend them by hand. And you can bend them by hand. They're not that hard. But this makes it so quick and so precise. It's pretty amazing. So, lost our barbecue skewer. Grab your uh, shrink-wrapped firewall and control horns. Let's open those up. We're going to need two control horns for this step. We have our control horns. We purposely print our control horns smaller because you can order these from our website. We print the holes smaller so that you can customize your push rod wire. Now keep in mind, our push, water, our push rod wire is pretty thick. So take your X-Acto knife and just drill out this hole just a bit, both sides, enough that will allow you to slip that uh, push rod wire into the control horn. Making sure it moves freely. If you need to go back and re-drill it just a little bit. But like I said, once again, we purposely make those small because some people order these from our website and they may not be using our thick push rod wire. Okay, once that's done, you just have to feed in this wire, just like that. And I like to go on the outside so that the Z bend is on the outside. And then I'll feed it into the servo, into the cable stop on the servo. And then the reason why we don't cut these in is depending on where you mount your servo or depending on which way you like your control rods to go will depend on where this push rod or this control horn goes. Once that's mounted in there, wherever the angle this of this is, let it be that angle. I like to try to make my push rod as straight as possible. And then what I'll do is I'll come in here and I'll just mark where the push rod or the control horn is supposed to go down into the foam. And then I'll just cut it out. Okay. Super easy. Now that's been cut out, I just move the control horn up, finish off my cuts, being careful not to cut through the back of the foam because you've got your skin on there. Dig out what you just cut out, clean out the hole, take your control horn and your push rod wire back, and I always test fit it, always, always test fit it. Look at that, works out perfectly. Okay, now I'm going to take a little bit of glue, put it down in this cavity, then I'm going to set it was a little bit of excess glue. Shouldn't have put that much glue in there. But we got a piece of foam. We can come in and just wipe the rest of it off. And actually having that little bit that squeezed out of the hole isn't the end of the world because it will actually keep your control horn in place. Don't rush this process either. You want to push it down until it's, until it's dry. The next thing we'll want to do is we'll trim off the excess. I usually like to leave myself about an inch on the control rod so that I can adjust this when I get in the field or at my field. Somewhat bring that servo um, back to a neutral position and then just guess it and you can get your wire cutters, your pair of dykes, and just clip that wire off. Make sure that when you cut it, you protect this end because that'll go shooting across the room. In fact, I will show you after this control rod, after this control horn dries, um, having the same problem that Kylan had last time. It's a control horn. <laughs> after, after that dries, I will show you how I cut these off. All right, now that that's dry, grab my wire cutters and I'm going to about an inch, I'm going to cut this off. I'm going to hold this piece, and I'm just going to cut this piece. This 
extra off. Pretty close, pretty good. Throw that piece away and let's move on to the other servo on the other side of the wing. Take my, repeat the same process. Take my push rod, drill out this control horn, put the push rod through the control horn. Once we get it through the control horn, we can put it through our cable stop. Let it rest naturally where it wants to be. Mark our lines for our control horn. Now, you want your control horn the, to be right over the hinge, right where the control horn meets the wire. You want that to be right over the hinge, right here on this edge, right over the top part of the hinge. Once I've got this marked, finish cutting it out, dig out the foam. Test fit it. Seems to be pretty good. Take your glue. And hot glue it in. Hold that till it dries. All right, now that we have our wing done, Let's focus our attention on the other parts of the fuselage. Let's set this aside. This airframe goes together in pieces. So we build it in sections. There's four main sections and then we assemble. Let's focus on the belly pan. First step in assembling the belly pan is we're going to want to take out our cavities here. If you didn't previously cut these in, Go ahead and do so. You can go ahead and just fold these back, crack that foam all the way, and then work your fingers down. I'm going to give this a little bit more of a cut here. I always like to trace my score lines before I pull them out. This will just help make that foam come out a lot easier. Run my thumb down it. Separate that foam out. Make sure you get that channel nice and clean, clearing away all that foam. Here's a pro tip. You'll notice I have a little bit of foam in here. Just take a paint stick and run it down that Run it down that channel. It'll clean that channel out nice and neat. Got this little piece we want to get off. Repeat the same process on this other side. Fold this back. Run your utility knife or your exacto blade down the score to make sure it frees up the foam. Now that we have these two channels dug out, this is going to be a B-fold, which means it goes beside the bottom plate. I always like to test fit. Pretty good. I'm going to put a bead of glue in this cavern. And then we're going to fold it up. Use a, tape, a roll of tape as a square just to make sure everything's nice and square. Hold it till it dries. Or use a square. Roll of tape works just as good though. Whatever you have. Once that's dry, Rotate it over, flip it over, and let's apply a bead of glue in this channel. 
once again. It's a B-fold. Grab my tape as well as my square and use them in conjunction. All right, once we've got that side done, let's do repeat the same process on the other side. It's a B-fold, means it goes beside the bottom plate. Now that that's nice and dry, let's focus our attention towards the back of the airframe or the back of the belly pan. There are some score lines here. Use your barbecue skewer and just run them down those score lines. That'll help train the foam of where it's to go. Let's do a test. So these angle in and the bottom of the belly pan angles up to form a nozzle. We're gonna take our glue gun. We're gonna bury the glue gun tip in these score lines. We're gonna put glue here and here. You wanna make sure you have enough hot glue on hand. Grab another stick if you don't have one because you, want want you don't wanna run out of hot glue on this step. To get those filled up, I just like to put my hands on the side, being careful not to glue, to burn yourself. Hold those if you want to use the table. Feel free to do that. After that's dry, then what you can do is take your hot glue gun and just put a bead of glue all along the inside where the joints are. That will really help out with strength and rigidity. Okay, belly pan is done. Let's set the belly pan aside and let's focus on the top plate of the fuselage. For the top plate, you're gonna need two pieces. You're gonna need this piece and the elevators or horizontal stabilizer. Let's set this piece aside for now. We need to take the horizontal stabilizer, flip it to the side with the black, and we need to cut the elevators free along this line on the skin. The score line in the, in the elevator is already there. All you're doing is freeing it up from when you laminated the skin on. I'm gonna take it there. I'm gonna go all the way in. There. And there, once again, don't cut through the bottom of the skin. The next two cuts I'm going to do, I'm gonna make this cut here, starting at this line and cutting back. This cut actually goes all the way through. So you can kind of press hard, make sure you go all the way through. Same thing on the other side. Now that we have that done, we can focus on joining these two pieces together. Like so. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a piece of tape and run it along this seam right here, but I'm actually going to do it on the inside so it's not seen. Make sure those line up. Take my piece of tape. Make sure your tape doesn't cover up these two holes here. Make sure it's down nice and tight. Trim it up. Make sure it's adhered to the foam. Flip it over. Fold this open. And in that gap, I'm going to put some glue. Once I've got that full of glue, fold it down and just hold it down in place using the table and once that's dry, that seam will be strong as nails. Or, I guess the saying is tough as nails. Let that dry thoroughly before moving on to the next step. After this is dry, we want to flip this over. And we'll want to cut out this score line. 
Don't cut all the way through the foam, all the way through the paper on the back side, and clean out these cavities. This is where the power pod is going to mount. Now that we've got these two cavities cut out, there's two more cavities up here that are laser cut that you can just go ahead and clear out as well. This is where the fuselage, the bottom plate of the fuselage attaches. Now that we've got those cleared out, we can set this piece aside. Next, we're gonna focus our attention on the nose. There are six pieces that make up the nose. Two side plates, the bottom plate, the nose, cone or nose tip if you will and two pieces we haven't punched out of the foam yet the doublers let's go ahead and punch the doublers out of the foam now those should just fall right out perfect now that we have the doublers punched out of the foam let's go ahead and set the two side plates and the doublers aside and focus our attention on the back side of the nose tip or nose cone and the bottom plate. Flip these over. You've got two cavities to clean out. Two score lines. Once again, I like to run my knife through those score lines just to make it a little bit easier and free them up. After that's done, these should come up fairly easily. Like that. If you didn't get it quite clean, use your paint stick. Makes a really nice tool for cleaning out those cavities. Same thing with this. Let's, now that we've cleared out these channels, let's focus our attention on the nose cone. We're going to peel this paper off because this part of the nose is going to be molded. This section right here that's in gray is the section that you're going to want to mold on the edge of the table. Bring it over to the edge and just very gently start to mold that over. Crushing down that foam using the corner of the table. Then we can come back and we can actually use our thumbs and work this back and forth. The nice thing is that the foam crinkles on the inside, you're not going to notice it on the outside because the skin makes it nice and round. Okay, once that it's at a pretty sharp angle, kind of like that. Let's set this aside and focus our attention on the side plates and the doublers. Two side plates, two doublers. On the backs of these side plates, what I like to do is just take a scrap piece of foam and make sure that, that doubler is perfectly aligned so that you only have one foam thickness. It's marked on the free plans if you're building from the free plans, but on the quick kit it's not. So just make sure that's right in place. And then you can take a pen or a pencil, whichever you prefer, I like to use color coordinated, so on the free plans, blue is the reference line. And I just like to draw it on there. What that does, what that does, is that's going to allow you to know right where to put it. Take my hot glue gun, I'm going to put a generous amount of glue on this doubler. Moving it around to spread that glue out, and then make sure it lines up with my marks. And just to double check, take your scrap piece of foam, and make sure it lines up with the edges. Press it down, wait for it to dry. Repeat the same process on the other side of the nose cone. Voila! Geniser, 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 ge who? generous amount of glue. I can't talk tonight. 
super late. Once again, put it down. Roll that around just a little bit. Make sure it lines up with your blue marks or whatever color you used. Press it down and wait for it to dry. <coughs> All right, once our nose doublers are done, the piece we just molded, remember, there's a top and a bottom. The bottom has got the little panels, the six little panels. The top has the two long panels. Now that we got those doublers glued on, is we're going to test fit. And one thing we want to line up on this whole thing, helps if you get the right side, is the nose lines. Okay, so there's a line on the side of the fuse, or on the side of the nose, and there's a line on the bottom of the nose. We want to make sure those are as close as possible. Okay, line up pretty good. Now that I've test fit that, I can go ahead and start gluing it. I want to start right at the nose, and I don't want to glue this all at once. So I'm going to take my glue gun, and I'm just going to glue just the nose part. Okay. I'm going to fit this together. You want to put some glue right here, too. Just about forgot about that. I'm going to put this together, and then you're going to make sure those lines line up. And also, once again, make sure the six panel is on the bottom. And if those line up, the table, and just hold it in place until it dries. Don't rush this process. If you rush this process, it's going to break loose, and then you're going to be in a world of hurt. So there's one side, and what we're going to do is we're going to work our way all along the top and all along the bottom, applying glue as we go. Once this nose piece is dry, I'm going to take my glue gun. I'm just going to come in here and put my glue gun down and apply a bead. And at this point, I can go all the way to the end. Come underneath and apply a bead glue to the skin. Well, that's a little bit awkward. Come to the edge, use your table. And then just make sure it's square. Grab your square. And make sure those two pieces are square. And just hold it there until it's dry. Once that's thoroughly dry, finish off the bottom. You can apply a bead of glue here. and on the inside of the doubler. Fold this around. Again, using the table, grab my square. And make sure it's square. These doublers are gonna make your airframe really strong in the nose. Once that's dry, we can go ahead and glue all along here and all along here and put this other side of the nose in place. I'm going to push back on the nose and squeeze it together while squeezing the top as well. Grab my square. Just make sure it's square. Squeezing it. Squeeze the nose. That way you'll have a good form fit on the front of the airframe. Once we have that glued, we're going to focus on this bottom plate. And we're going to always dry fit once again. That bottom plate goes on just like that. Once we've dry fit that bottom plate, take our hot glue gun, run a bead of glue down one side, 
run a bead of glue down the other side. And then run a bead of glue right here on the front. And that's going to tuck up against the piece you just installed. Don't burn your fingers on this part. This slips down there just like so. And I'm going to use the table, push it over, make sure everything's seated. It's a, technically a B-fold. Grab my square. Just make sure everything's nice and square, nice and tight. Remember, it's technically a B-fold. The side plates go be below, or sorry, the side plates go on the side, beside the bottom plates. Then after that's dry, the one thing I like to do is where this joint is, I like to grab a piece of tape, like so, and just run the tape right along the line in the skin. A little bit excess there. And that will help keep those two pieces together. Just push down nicely. And now the nose is done. Let's focus our attention on the canopy. The canopy consists of two parts the outer skin and the canopy itself. The structural part of the canopy we haven't cut out yet. So let's go ahead and punch that out of the foam. Just like so. Now, we're going to take out the foam in these cavities where these score lines are. Again, just using my knife to free up those score lines a little bit. Break them free. And they should peel right back. Now that we've got those cavities cleaned out, these are going to be an A-fold. Put a little bit of glue in the cavity, focusing most your glue on the top, A-fold above the bottom plate. Grab my square, hold that till it's dry. Repeat the same process on the other side. Once that's dry, take your glue gun and just Put a little glue along the inside, just a small bead. Next, we're going to clear out these channels on the top plate of the canopy. Now you'll notice on this skin that it's going to hang over quite a bit. And there's a reason for that. And the reason being is when you slide this down in your airframe, you want to make sure that there's a little bit of overlap to cover up the foam that this slides into. We'll explain it a little bit more when we get to that point. The next step is to take the top plate, peel off the paper on the inside, then we're going to take it to the edge of the table, and we're just going to slightly round this. Not too much. We just want to match the curve of the canopy. Okay, test fit it. And that fits beautifully. Now we can go one step further, and if we grab the nose cone we just finished up, we can bring this in and we can test fit to make sure everything lines up. Looks pretty good. Now we can come in here. And we're going to take this, and we're going to glue in, put a bead of glue here, and a bead of glue here, and we're going to glue this to the top of the canopy. All right, once your canopy is done, you can simply just slip it in your airframe, set your nose cone aside, and we're going to prepare the wing tips in preparation for final assembly of our airframe. These are the wing tips. 
flip them over, you've got four score lines you need to clean out. One, two, three, four. Fold these back. Break it free and peel the foam out of the cavity. Once that foam's out of that cavity, and you've done the same thing on the other wing tip, I'm going to go ahead and glue these together. Make sure these cavities are perfectly clean. Again, if you, they're not clean enough for you, take that paint stick and run it up and down them. We're going to test fold these over, like so, making sure they're nice and square. Repeat the same thing on the other one. Like so. Take my glue gun. Take some glue. Be generous on these. And then glue in here. And then just fold them over. Be careful not to burn yourself on this. And as it's drying, I like to rotate it on its top. Not only does that allow to, you to see if you pushed it down enough, but it allows you to square up that top. Take some scrap foam, clean up the edges, hold it till it dries. Repeat the same process on the other wing tip. You want to make sure you take your time on this step because these wing tips will add structural support to the actual wing tips of the wing. Here we go. Wing tips are ready. Let's set them aside. The last piece we have to prep is the motor mount. This piece we need to clear out the cavities. And this is going to be an A-fold. Take our hot glue gun, one side at a time. Take our square, make sure it's square. Cut strings everywhere. Saw a comment on Facebook about, is there anything you can do to eliminate glue strings from your glue gun? Unfortunately, I don't know of anything you can do. If you know of anything that eliminates glue strings, leave a comment below. Share the love. All right, once that's dry, I can go ahead and put just a small bead of glue there to there. Come over and repeat the same process on the other side. A fold above the bottom plate. All right. So this is where this is the part that the power pod is actually going to slip into. So you want to make sure this is fairly strong. Take your time on this. Wait for your glue to dry. Once that's thoroughly dry, let's go back and recover our top plate of our fuselage. And this is going to sit in those two slots right there. I always like to dry fit, and I always make sure I crush the foam just a little bit, just to help it go in a little bit easier. There we go. Now that we're happy and satisfied with the way that fits, we're going to go ahead and apply glue in these channels, and then along the tops here and here. Glue. Along the top. Now, just hold that down. Make sure it's square. Just hold that till it dries. Once that's dry, we're going to cut our 
uh, once that's dry, we're going to cut our elevators free. So let's just go to the edge of the table and break these open, fold them back. Fold these back, bring it to the edge of the table. And now that we're at the edge of the table, we're going to use our ruler and we're going to take our utility knife blade and we're going to go ahead and cut these bevels. We're cutting them on the elevator side, just like we did with the ailerons, making sure they're on the elevator side. There's one. And here's number two. If you're not comfortable with cutting with a razor blade like this, you can always use the sanding block. It's a lot louder, a lot messier, but a lot safer as well. Okay, now that I've got those cut in, I'm just gonna make sure they, they move freely, which they don't because I need to, once again, trim it up just a bit. Right here. Kind of stick your knife in there, run it back and forth. Crushes down the foam just a little bit. It allows these to move freely as needed. Once those move freely without any restrictions, once again, I like to take a piece of tape. And this time, I'm going to go across the whole width of the fuselage. I'm going to tape up those joints just so they never fail me. This will extend the life of your airframe and extend the life of your joints as well. It's like arthritis medicine. <laughs> getting new knees As my grandmother-in-law says she needs new knees my mom just had her knee replaced actually once we've got that piece of tape across the uh, elevators I'm going to run my fingernails along it and make sure it's pressed down nice and good against the foam, against the skin. Free up my elevators by cutting the tape between them. Make sure they're, they work freely. Working them back and forth just to ensure that we're gonna have full function both ways without any rubbing. Perfect. Now that the elevators are beveled and cut free, We're going to grab the power pod. It's the second to last piece we haven't cut out of the foam. Set that part of the fuselage aside. This is the power pod. The other was the power pod mount. I think I called it the power pod. It's the power pod mount or sleeve, if you will. This is the actual power pod. This is what your firewall is going to glue to, or your motor mount, however you prefer to call it. We're going to free up the score lines. And for this step, you're going to need your power pod. And for this step, you're going to need your firewall or motor mount, however you want to call it. Now that we got those pieces, grab your Motor mount with firewall, get out of the way. You'll notice this is our new firewall. I don't know if you can see there, but it actually has HRC Wasp printed on it, so we know what we're dealing with. Once the cavities are cleared out, we're gonna grab our motor, and we're gonna mount our motor to our firewall. Here, line up the holes. 
There we go. Put the screws in. What do I do with my screwdriver? There it is. And we're just going to, what I like to do is I just like to start this screw. And then grab another one. Make sure things are lined up by starting another screw before I tighten them all up. Sometimes it gives you that little bit of extra play that you need to get the screw all the screws in motor mount. Once again, this is probably some place where you could use some Loctite. Um, just be cautious though, if you use Loctite, these screws may be a little bit more difficult to get out if you ever have to replace your motor or your power pod. Once I have all the screws started, I will go ahead and tighten them down. And like lug nuts, I like to do them in a star pattern. And the last thing I like to do is I'll finish it off with some hot glue just over the top of the screws so they don't back out. Helps prevent from them from backing out. Keeps that motor nice and solid. There we go. After you've got your motor mounted on the motor mount plate or firewall, set that aside. Let's focus on the actual power pod. I always like to dry, do a dry fit, dry run of it. Looks pretty good. This first one, these first two folds go above the bottom plate. So we're going to start on this section right here. Some glue. Focus most of your glue on the bottom of that plate, above the bottom plate. Grab my square. Make sure that dries nice and square. Okay. Just like so. Next one, put some glue above the bottom plate, nice and square, and you can fold the top down to help keep everything nice and true. Once that's dry, we can put the top in, and you'll notice the top goes in between the two and then you've got an extra little flap to fold down just to give that extra bit, extra bit of strength. Strength. Put some glue here, glue here. Just about dropped it. Be careful because this will burn your fingers. Make sure that slides down, push it against the table. Now what I like to do is while that's drying, put a bead of glue here. Then using the table, rotate that power pod and then slide it so that you don't glue it to the table. You'll get a little glue on your table or your mat, but that's okay. I just like to just rub it up while it's still drying and it should come right off. Sometimes I'll take my square, probably not the best use of my square, or I'll grab my utility knife blade and just lightly scrape it off my work surface to get all those Wool globules up. And while you've done that, your power pod should be dry. Now we can take our motor. And it doesn't matter which end of the power pod you want to put it on. Make sure it lines up, which it does. And then I'm going to put glue along these edges. Don't hesitate to add a little bit more glue than you think is necessary. Line this up like so. Hold that on. We'll let it dry. While that's drying, I like to flip it over. And then what I'll do is I'll be very careful, but I'll just run a little bit of glue and let it drip down on the edges there, making sure not to get it in the motor. And that way it just gives it a little bit more to grip to. Once that side's dry, I'll flip it over and do the other side. 
All right. Now that our power pod's done, we're almost ready to assemble the fuselage. Go back and grab your bottom tray. And we're going to go back in and we're going to install the servos. Now, you'll notice we haven't marked where the servos go. The reason why we did that is some people may want to mount these servos internally so they're not external, so they can't see them. We have chosen to mount ours externally, once again, for serviceability. But if you choose to mount them internally, all you'll have to do is mount your servo and run a push rod out the side of your airframe to the elevators. We're going to mount ours externally, mainly for serviceability and a little bit easier to do. One thing you want to make sure you do is it's about four inches from this line right here. So I'm just going to guess four inches, okay? And I'm going to center the servo between the top rivets and the middle rivets. Somewhere in there should be pretty good. I'm just going to take my knife and mark the edges carefully. Now that i got the edges marked, I can very carefully cut through both sides of the foam board, which is going to allow this servo to sit flush. Now I'm going to test fit my servo. I'm going to test fit this, but I'm not going to glue it in just yet. Instead, I'm going to flip it over on the other side. In fact, you can take your servo out and flip it over on the other side. And approximately four inches Again, four inches is about where those uh, two rows of rivets sit after the angle here. And take my servo again, approximately between the top row of rivets and the second row of rivets. I'm going to mark my edges. Once again, a very simple process, but we wanted to give the advanced builders the option of putting these servos internally so that they're not, a seen, not seen, so that they can make their aircraft look just a little bit more scale. But since we're a bunch of rookies here, we're gonna mount them externally. Blame it on the rookie. Now that we got that, let's go ahead and test fit this side. All right, that looks pretty good. Let's take our other servo here and fit it in. You want to make sure when you do glue these in, we're not gluing them yet, that both control arms are pointing in the downward direction. Okay. Now before I glue these in, I like to grab my battery again, my Venom 2200 4 cell, and my servo tester, and my 30 amp ESC, and I like to Test these servos to make sure I've got them correctly oriented. Now, one thing when you set this up in your transmitter, you're going to have to flip the direction of one of these servos because they have to work together. You don't want them working like ailerons. Okay, so you'll see what I mean in just a second. I'm going to set this to manual. You're going to see as I move these, they are working opposite currently. So if that one's back, this one's forward. Okay? So once we get this set up in our transmitter, we're going to have to program them to be reversed so that they both go back together and they both go forward together. Okay? Now that I know those work, once you've set your battery and ESC and servo tester aside, you're going to grab two servo extensions making sure you're matching polarity. You're going to plug them, plug them in to the servos. Now that we got those installed, I'm going to pop my servos out and we're going to glue them in. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little glue on the underside of the servo where you'd normally screw it in. And then I'm going to put a little bit of glue 
around the inside of the cavity where you just cut out. Work my servo into place. And once that's in place, and I know it's going to stay, I can come on the back side and go ahead and just apply a little bit of glue around it, bead of glue all the way around it so that it will stay in place. Because it's mounted in the foam, you're not going to have a whole lot of, you're not going to have to worry about a whole lot. It will hold. Repeat the same process on the other side. Put a little bit of glue there where the screws would normally hold the servo into a balsa model. Put a little glue on the inside of here. Slide my servo in. All the way in. Then I'm going to come and apply some glue around the base of it. And it should be good. Now, I don't want these servo leads to come unplugged while I'm in flight. That would be disastrous. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to take them, I'm going to glue them together, and then I'm going to glue them to the bottom here. Okay, just in the middle. That way it will hold, and you don't have to worry about them coming out in flight. I'm going to put that down first. Take this and put a little glue there. Put it here. Hold those till they dry. The other thing you can do is you can take your glue gun and once again, making sure that you just put a little dab of glue and hold it in place on top of those two wires so that they will stay in place and you'll never lose your wires in your airframe. There's nothing worse than trying to dig wires out of your airframe. It's going to hold those in place until they dry. Give that glue plenty of time to dry. And once they dry, I'm going to go back and I'm going to glue where the servo plugged into the servo extension and make sure that joint does not come apart in flight either. Okay, now that those are dry, I'm going to come back and I'm just going to glue these two pieces together, applying a liberal amount of glue, which is okay, just to make sure they don't come loose in flight. I'm going to add a couple more places where I can just take that crossed, just to hold everything in place. I'm going to go ahead and let that dry. Now that that's dry, we're to the exciting part. All right, all right, all right, all right. Um, <laughs> all right. Something my uh, friend Brett Turner uses. If you haven't seen him, haven't looked him up, look him up on YouTube. He's awesome. All right. Now that we've installed the servos in the bottom tray and we've got the wires glued down, we're ready for a dry fit assembly. We want to make sure we dry fit it before we glue anything together. And we're going to punch out our last piece of foam. This is essentially a dihedral gauge. It's for the vertical stabilizers. And that's the last piece you'll need. Right here. So let's gather our pieces for this last final dry fit assembly. And let's get the plane put together. Got our nose. We can take our canopy off at this point. We don't need the canopy in. Got our top plate of our fuselage. We have our, we have our wing assembly. And we have some of our miscellaneous parts. Those are going to be used more aesthetically than anything, but now that we've gathered up all our parts, let's take the bottom tray and the wing and slide those together. That's the cool thing about this airframe, is everything slides together after you've got it all assembled. Just like so. 
The second piece we're going to bring in is the nose. And the nose, run your wires into the nose, will slip into the wing like that. Now before we dry fit the next piece, let's take our bottom tray and squish these pieces down just a bit. Just so they fit into the top plate nicely. And then the top plate, using these holes in the bottom, fits into the nose and into the bottom tray. And there we go. We are ready for final assembly. This is awesome. Can't wait. Let's get going. After you've dry assembled, dry fit, make sure everything fits perfectly. You can take it apart. And we're going to focus on attaching the top plate to the bottom tray. So you want to make sure you have a glue gun that can distribute a lot of glue um, in a relatively short period of time. If you don't have one, make sure you pick up another one for this step. Um, you want to make sure you have an extra glue stick on hand. And let's get to gluing. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to glue all along this top edge. Now these look pretty mutilated, and they are, but that's okay because you're not going to see them. Make sure you glue along these top edges. And then you want to glue here, 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 and here in the top plate. I'm going to start by gluing those four places. Be liberal with your glue because this is where everything is going to come together. The thing I like about this Royal B glue gun is it delivers a lot of hot glue and it's screaming hot. Then we're going to make sure this fits down and tabs in. Might be easier to flip it upside down. Let that lay flat and make sure your tabs go where they're supposed to. There's one. Make sure it's laying completely flat. There's two. There's three. And there's number four. These front two tabs may not feel incredibly stable to you, but that's okay because the wing's going to hold everything together. Once you're happy with the way that's dry, take your glue gun and run a bead of glue right along the top, between the top plate and the bottom tray. Let's give this a good long while to dry. We don't want this to fail mid-flight, so let's make sure this completely dry. You want to focus most of your pressure over the back of the fuse. These thin pieces, we'll focus that when we get the wing mounted in place. All right, once you're happy that the bottom tray and the top plate are sufficiently dry and bonded really well, make sure you wait for that hot glue to dry. We want to take the wing and we want to slide the wing into place. Once again, we're just going to do a quick dry fit just to make sure everything falls into place. Slides right into the empennage. The key is to make sure these front two pieces line up. Looks like they do pretty good. Now that dry fits in place. It's a big airframe. <laughs> All right, now that that's dry fitted, let's pull it out, put it to the side. And the places we're going to glue are here and here. We want to do this relatively quick because we have two sides to do. Once again, make sure you have a hot glue gun that can deliver enough hot glue. I'm going to put this here. Liberal amount. This is what holds the whole airframe together. Okay. Let's flip it over really quick. Apply another amount there. Flip it over and apply a mount here. I know that's hard for you to see on camera and I apologize. But it's just one of those things, you know. And here. 
being quite generous and liberal with this, I'm going to take my wing and try to line it up the best I can and slide it in place. Make sure it goes all the way to the back, to the back of the fuselage and seats. Make sure this notch right here is lined up with the top plate and make sure that seats all the way back. Push some downward pressure on the top plate and wait for it to dry. And we're going to go back and reinforce it with some glue. But it's starting to look like an actual F-18. Super excited. This is my favorite part of the whole build. All right. Once that's dry enough that you can move it around, you can go back and you can apply glue, a bead of glue along this edge, as well as along the edge here at the bottom. I'm going to start at the bottom. All the way back on this side, all the way back. Now one thing you'll notice is I ran my wires out the bottom of the wing. That's critical because there's not a lot of space at the top of the wing. So make sure you run those wires out the bottom of the wing. Okay, now next thing I'm going to do, is I'm going to come in and I'm going to put some glue along the top. Just a small bead along the top on the other side. And then I'm going to stick my nozzle of my glue gun underneath here and just put a dab of glue there and a dab of glue there. Set it back down on the table. I'm going to push those down and let them dry. That's just going to give it a little bit of extra support when you're doing those extreme low passes like they do in our West Texas design facility. Take your time, let this all dry. This is the structural integrity of your airframe. Make sure you take your time. Make sure all the glue is dry before you move on to the next step. All right, now that that's all dry, it's time to mount our nose cone. Grab our nose, we're gonna dry fit it one more time. Always like to dry fit. Run those wires right up into the nose. Not my nose, the nose. And then, we're going to slide it back in, and it slides in two pieces. The wing slides here, and the top plate goes in this slot. So make sure you get those in the right spots. Okay, They won't be seen, they'll be hidden, but just make sure they go in the right spots. One and two. And then you have to make sure that the nose on the bottom side fits into the bottom tray. Now once that's fit in, you can slide the nose in all the way, just like so. Make sure those wires are tucked away, out of the way. Looks pretty good. And now, we're going to glue the nose in. I'm going to apply glue here and here, along this edge, right here, here, Again, make sure you have a glue gun that can deliver the amount of glue you need. It's critical with this build. I like the AdTech Pro 80s. It can deliver a ton of glue. But I also like my field gun, my Ryobi. Got to be kind of quick with this. Make sure you slide it in place. Feed those wires up out of your way and make sure everything goes where it's supposed to go. Flipping the airframe over to make sure that bottom piece slips in the bottom of the bottom tray. There we go, wires out of the way. And give it some pressure, some back pressure. Next, after that's set, you're gonna run a bead of glue in between the fuse, the nose cone, and the fuselage. And then you're going to stick that to the side. It basically goes right along the panel line. Don't rush this process. You want to make sure that's fully dry. Alrighty. Once you're sure the uh, four pieces of your airframe, the bottom tray, 
the top plate, the wing, and the nose cone are sufficiently dry, we're now going to focus our attention towards the aesthetics of the airplane, minus the vertical stabilizers. Let's set the plane aside for the time being. Let's clear off our work surface, all the glue globules. You want to make sure you do that. This goes behind the canopy. We've got two score lines. We're going to take our X-Acto blade. We're going to run down the score lines just to make sure that we're free and clear. Love it when they come out one piece as I flip it off the desk. Okay, set those aside. This time I'm going to grab my paint stick again. I'm just going to run it down the sides because it didn't come off quite as clean as I would have liked. Perfect. There's that piece. And these are the side plates for this piece. Okay. After you've cleaned out the cavities sufficiently, we're going to take this and we're going to peel off the paper on the back of the foam. Then we're going to gently round it from this line, one, two, three, or where it starts to angle in, we're going to gently round it on the edge of the table. You don't want it too much, just enough to make that curve. Now that we've got that rounded, we're going to go back to our airframe. And we're going to dry fit it on top of the fuselage. It butts up right next to the canopy. Let me grab the canopy, I'll show you right next to the canopy, just like so. Let me get the canopy in. It's a good idea to have the canopy in place during this step. So you can see right where that needs to go. Looks pretty good. Take it out. I'm going to apply a bead of glue here and here. No further. Don't go onto that angle yet this in place and hold it till it's dry. All right, once this piece is installed, we're going to install the side plates. Let's test fit them. They go, let me show you, right under like so. On the sides, there's two of them, one for each side. Once we know that they're test fitted and they fit dry, then we can put the glue on. All right, we want to do one side at a time. Start with this side. I'm going to glue along the front, along the bottom, and along the top. The whole length of the piece. Here we go. Careful, because this piece is really narrow. Okay. Now we're going to slip it in place. Lift this up just a hair. Push that, butt that up. Try not to get glue like I just did. Try not to get glue on your fuselage. Not going to affect the performance, but it will affect the looks. You want to make sure you hold this until it's completely dry. If you want to pre-build this piece, you're more than welcome to. When you pre-build it, you put the top and the sides plates on first. I just find it easier this way because it allows me to line, make sure I got my lines on the fuselage lined up. But pre-building it may be easier for you. Okay, on to the next side. Rotate this big bird around. Get my glue globules off. A little overexcited with my glue. Make sure I put this in place. Once again, be very careful not to burn yourself on this process. And while this is drying, I'm going to lift up this end, place a little 
bead of glue right there just to secure that end down right towards the tail. This is also going to help add structural integrity to the airframe. It's going to make this airframe incredibly strong. Now that that's done, we're going to turn our attention to the bottom of the airframe. So let's flip it over. This piece, remove this section of foam, and it's going to slide in and attach just like so. I'm going to put glue all along here and along this surface. There. When I press it down, this piece is sheerly aesthetics, although it does help tie everything together. I move it around slightly to spread that glue. And then what I want to do is I want to make sure it's tucked tight against the front. And then line the center line up right here. This center line right here, line it up. Hold it down in place. And this is one of the reasons why we don't put the vertical stabilizers on till very last. Because if those were on, it would make it so we couldn't do any of this detail work. Now that that's on, we can focus our attention to the push rods for the elevators. I'm going to grab my control horns and my final two push rods. Here they are. And I've misplaced my knife. There it is. All right. So once again, drill out the control horn so that the push rod will fit. Easy process. 3D printed control horns. Easy process. Okay, now that we've got this control horn drilled out, I'm just going to test fit the wire. See if it's going to go through. If not, I can probably drill it out just a little bit more. You want it to be just a little loose. So now that it fits, I'm just going to do one last little twirl in here just to make sure that has plenty of motion. There it looks like it does. Now I'm going to fit the control horn to the wire over the Z-Bend. Sometimes you have to just wiggle it in. It'll go. Just take your time. There we go. Feed the wire through my cable stop. Now, you notice that push rod's extra long. We do that on purpose so that you can fit this control horn right where you need it to be. I like it right there. With this part right above the right above the hinge. Once it's square, I like it. Make sure my push rod's straight. Yep. Just gonna mark it out. Drag it through. Drag it through. Dig out the cavity. Test fit. That's going to be perfect, just like so. And now, take my nose and my glue gun, put some glue in that cavity, and slide that control horn right in place. Hold it till it's dry. Once again, don't rush this process. Let that control horn dry fully before you move on to the next one. All right, now that that control horn's glued in, we can focus our attention to the other control horn. And then once again, drill out the hole on our control horn with our X-Acto knife. So it'll accommodate the thicker wire if you're using our quick kits. If you're not using our quick kits, and you just ordered some of our control horns from our store at shopthehangerrc.com, then you can put you can drill it out to whatever size push rod wire that you that you have. That's why we do it the way we do it. All right, feed that in. Okay, once you've got that control horn seated on the push rod, 
Repeat the same process on the other side. Going to feed our control, our push rod, control rod, through the cable stop. We're going to feed it through the cable stop <coughs> in the servo. There we are. Just like the other side. Figure out where you want that thing to sit. All right, now that we've got it marked, we're going to test fit it. Like a glove, grab our glue gun. We're going to put down the glue. And push this control horn into the elevator and let it dry. While that's drying, I'm going to put a bead of glue all the way around the other elevator control horn, just like this, just to give it that little bit of extra strength. Now while that's drying, we're going to come in and we can clip the excess wire off. Remember, I like to give it about an inch. Hold on to this wire so it doesn't go shooting across the room and hit your friend in the face. There's one piece. Here's two pieces. Just like so. And now, we're ready to refocus our attention back on the top side of the airframe. All right, let's flip the airframe over. And we're gonna focus our attention Specifically, the wingtips and the vertical stabilizers. Let's start off with the wingtips. Rotate your wing up like this. What I like to do is put my wingtip about where I want it. Now this is one thing that you get to pick, what you do. And then I take my little marker, my little pen, and I'm just going to mark it where I want it. Just so I know, take it off, grab my glue gun, apply glue to the wing tip area. Don't glue the servo, <laughs> don't glue the aileron. Here, line up my wing tip where my marks are and just hold the airframe in place. Once that wing tip's thoroughly dry, take your glue gun, just run a bead of glue right along the edge of it. The wing tips are surely aesthetic. They don't affect the flight performance whatsoever. You don't have to use them if you don't want to. However, I think it looks really cool with them on. Repeat the same process on the other side. Repeat the same process on the other side. Hold it till it's dry. Don't rush this process. The wing tips do add stability to the tip of the wing. It's a little bit of strength. So even though you don't have to put them on, I would recommend doing so. Now the wing tips are done. I'm gonna flip the airframe back over. We're going to focus our attention on the last part before we put the motor in, and that is the vertical stabilizers. First thing we're going to do is we're going to munch, munch. We're going to squeeze this edge just a little bit on these tabs just to make sure that they fit in perfectly. We're going to dry fit like we always do. Repeat the same process on the other side. So we're going to fit in there perfectly. And this is where you need to pull out that dihedral gauge. This is the angle of your vertical stabilizers. We're going to do one at a time. Okay. 
we're going to glue here, here, and here, and here. I'm going to fill some cavities up with some glue. Put a little glue on the sides of the tabs as well. That'll just help it hold it in place. Put this vertical stabilizer in place. There we go. Make sure you grab your dihedral gauge and hold that there until it dries. You don't want to let go and have that flop back forward. You want to make sure you have that angle on there. Give it plenty of time to dry. Once that's dry, I'm going to be the glue all the way around it. Just give it that little bit of extra support. All right, now that our vertical stabilizers are installed and at the proper angle using our dihedral gauge, I'm going to call it a dihedral gauge. I'm not sure if that's what it's actually called. We're going to take our motor. I know it doesn't have the bullet connectors soldered on the end of it yet. However, we're going to put our motor in the power pod. It just slides in. And it is going to be fairly tight. It's okay. That's the way we want it. We don't want it coming out. Once that motor is seated, then you can take your two barbecue skewers that came with your quick kit. And what I like to do is because we found that sometimes with the torque of these bigger motors, it will have a tendency to push that power pod forward. And so I like to just run my barbecue skewer right through the back and through the side of the, of the power pod and through the other side. And then Take your barbecue skewer and mark it, pull it out, and roll it with your knife, just like so, and then it should break nicely, and you can trim it up and feed it back in, and that will guarantee that your power pod will not slide forward as your doing some extreme maneuvers. Repeat the same process on the other side. Through your power pod, into there, we're in there, mark it, roll it with your Zacto knife, and then it should break cleanly. You just trim up the extra and put that back in like so. And now your power pod will not slide forward. Now, very last thing. If you purchased one of our quick kits, let's move this out of the way. If you purchased a quick kit, you remember way back at the first of the video, we had these missiles. These missiles are sheerly aesthetic. Um, they're kind of fun. So we're going to build these missiles and put it on the bottom side of this airframe. Missiles go together like this. You slide into each other. Just like so. So once we test fit them, make sure they fit. I'm going to put a bead of glue there and here. As I miss completely, <laughs> I'm going to slide this into the other part of the missile, making sure that lines on the skin line up. Once those are lined up, I can squeeze and hold it, and then go back and take my bead of glue and run it down on either side of the missile. After you've done that, squeeze on front and back and hold it till it dries. Once that's dry, 
do the same process, repeat the same process with the next missile. Put your glue in. Slide in your other piece. You might want to make sure those fins are true. Glue up the front. I'm going to be the glue on all four sides, the whole length of the missile. Squeeze front and back until it's dry. And now, after these are dry, we can go ahead and mount it on the airframe. I'm going to flip it upside down on my work table. And I'm going to take my glue. I'm going to glue along this top edge right here. Missile. And I'm just going to stick it down where I feel it should be. Of course, making sure it doesn't interfere with the aileron. And is critical. Make sure it does not interfere with the aileron. Once that one's dry, you can flip it around and do the exact same thing with the other side. Let's flip our airframe around. Our hot glue. Cavity. And I just lined it right up on this line once again making sure that doesn't interfere with my aileron. All right, guys, there you have it. Thanks for joining me on this build. HRC Wasp, it's a big airframe. Once again, I'd like to thank Rick Harlan for his amazing design. He's one of our crazy designers down at the West Texas Design Facility. They're doing some cool stuff this year. Stay tuned, we've got lots coming at you. Once again, thank you for your support. You guys have been a major support to us. We're, we're excited. We're moving forward. We've got an amazing lineup. Follow us on all social media, Instagram, Facebook. Hit the subscribe button on YouTube. And one of the biggest ways you can support us is head on over to our stores at shop.thehangerrc.com and pick yourself up a quick kit. We've got three airframes down and much more to come. Thanks for sticking with us through this build. It's a great airframe. It really is. It'll do just about anything you want it to in the air, and it looks amazing. Totally looks scale. You're going to love it. You can also download free plans from our website at thehangerrc.com. So head on over there, and you'll find all sorts of content, including our store. Once again, my name is Sam. This is the Hangar RC. This is the HRC Wasp. This is the airframe you want. Go out, make a memory. Until next time, go fly and learn, because remember, we're gonna all crash and burn. We'll see you next time at the hangar.